Hello and welcome back to another video on Unpack Technologies. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to install macOS Monterey on an unsupported Mac. macOS Monterey is the latest version of Apple's Mac operating system and it has some great new features. However, a lot of Macs were dropped off the support list this year, which means a lot of them now are either stuck on Big Sur or Catalina officially. However, installing it on an unsupported Mac will allow you to have some of the latest features, even if you have officially unsupported hardware. And from my experience, some of the unsupported hardware still runs great on the latest system. Today, I'm going to be using the Open Core Legacy Patcher to patch macOS Monterey onto a mid-2012 MacBook Pro. However, there are many supported models. So, let's get straight into it. So before we get started, you will need a few things for this installation. So you'll start off by needing a reliable internet connection because you will have to download a large 12 gigabyte file of the macOS Monterey installer. You also need a 16 gigabyte or larger USB drive so that we can create the uh, USB installer with the patched files on it so that we can install it onto the actual computer. And you'll need the computer itself to install it on. Now, to create the media, I'm going to be using this mid-2015 MacBook Pro, which is actually a supported Mac for macOS Monterey. However, I am going to be installing the media that we use to create it on there onto this mid-2012 MacBook Pro 13-inch. Now, the reason that I'm creating it on the supported Mac is because I actually have Mac OS Big Sur installed on here, whereas I don't have an operating system installed on the unsupported Mac. However, you can cre just create the media on the unsupported Mac itself if you already have an operating system on there, and that might be an easier way to do it for some of you. So now I'm going to switch to a screen recording so I can show you the process on how to create the bootable media so that you can install it on your unsupported Mac. Okay, so now that we're on the screen recording, we've got a couple of things to download and then we can create the bootable USB. So to start off, we need to download the DMG image for the installer of macOS Monterey. So the easiest way to do that is because on an unsupported Mac, you can't just download it from the App Store. Um, there's a person with a YouTube channel called Mr. Macintosh and he makes really great content and he also has a good website which um, allows us to download the installers from it um, so that we can get it on an unsupported Mac. And he makes great content so I'd recommend checking his channel out. Um, but you can go to, I'll leave all the links in the description below so you don't have to worry about remembering the links but I'm going to go to his website, so mrmacintosh.com and then on his website we can go to the Monterey installers section and then scroll down uh, and as you can see when it's in its final release stage you'll be able to download it from this section and this will be the final release. However, um, as of the time of recording it's actually the latest version is release candidate 2 uh, so that was just released but in Australia, it will be released this coming Tuesday, uh, the 26th of October 2021. However, Apple hasn't actually officially released the DMG installers for Release Candidate and Release Candidate 2. So that means the latest version at the moment will be Beta 10 that we can use. Um, but when you're watching this, most likely there will be a final release. So I'd recommend getting the final release, not one of the betas, because it will be more stable. However, um, for the sake of this video, I already have beta 10 downloaded in my applications folder, but if you need to download it, you just click one of these links for installassistant.pkg, and I'd recommend downloading the latest one. So now, once you've done that, you can close out of Safari, 
And then we'll need to open a new terminal window. So we'll need to be creating the bootable installer uh, for macOS Monterey now. So we'll just open up terminal now and then click enter. All right, and you'll see that the terminal window has opened. So once you have downloaded the macOS Monterey uh, installer, it'll be in your downloads folder and you'll just have to install the software. Um, so you'll open it up and then it will install the installer to your applications folder. So you'll see here on my computer, I have the install macOS Monterey installer here. So what I'll need to do is right click on it or control click and click show package contents. Then double click on the contents folder and then double click on the resources folder. Then in here, you'll see the create install media file. Now we'll need that in a moment, but go back to your terminal window and type in sudo space, that's S-U-D-O space. And then you'll need to drag in the create install media executable file. So drag that into the terminal window and let go. Now you'll see it's put in the application path. And now what you'll need to do is type in dash dash volume and then a space. So that's dash dash V-O-L-U-M-E. So then once you've typed that in, you'll need to plug in the USB drive which you're going to use to create the installation media. And this must be 16 gigabytes or larger. So now you just plug that into your Mac and just wait for it to initiate. Um, you should see it on your desktop here or also in the location section of the finder. So we'll just let that load in. All right, and you'll see it's just popped up on the desktop. So now we'll just drag that in to the terminal window and then you'll see it's put it in there. Now we just click enter and it will require the administrator password. So I'll just enter that now and then click enter. So I'll just press enter here. And then it will say ready to start. Now be aware that this will erase all data on the USB drive. So be sure to back up any data. I'd recommend using a USB drive that you don't rely on every day. So then you'll just need to type Y to continue with the erasing process and the creating of the bootable USB process and then just click enter. Now once you do that, you'll get like some percentage indicators to show how you're going and it could take a while. So anywhere between half an hour to an hour from my experience, it all just really depends on the speed of your USB drive. So I have actually created a video on this already if you'd like to see the full process. However, I'm going to stop here um, as I already have a USB drive made, but what you'll need to do is just click enter after typing Y. It'll do the whole process for you and then just wait for it to say that uh, it is finished and that the bootable USB media is available on the disk. So then once it says that, you can move on to the next step. So I'm going to close out of the terminal window for now and I'm going to eject this USB drive as I already have a USB bootable media. All right, so the next step is that we need to download the patcher itself. So the patcher we're going to be using is called the Open Core Legacy Patcher and it is available for downloading on GitHub. So what we'll need to do is open the web browser and type in Open Core Legacy Patcher and then just put Monterey on the end. Now, I'm going to leave the, these links in the description below as well so you can just go down there and find them. But what we'll do is we'll open the GitHub site and just let it load and you'll see we've got all the code and then some uh, information about it so you can read that if you'd like but what we need to do to download it is go to the releases section and we'll just open the releases and you can see that at the time of recording the latest release is 0.3.0 .0. and you can read the release notes there and then what you'll need to do is download opencorepatcher.tui.app.zip. That's the one we want. 
They've also got a GUI version, um, but the TUI version uh, is a bit more familiar to use. So I'll just download that now and then just allow the downloads and you can see it's downloading the file. It's a pretty small file, so it should be done pretty quickly. And while we're waiting for that to download, we can have a look at the supported Macs. So they also have a website for the OpenCore Legacy Patcher and we can go to the supported models section and we can have a look at what's supported. So they give a nice table to show what you can do it on. And if it says yes next to the MacBook models, that means it is possible for it to be supported. And you'll want to make sure uh, the best one to see is the green where it says everything is supported. If there's some information like this here, there may be some limitations with the install, like you might not have USB uh, or GPU acceleration. And if you don't have GPU acceleration, I would not recommend installing it because it makes the computer so slow, it's almost unusable. And you can scroll down to see your supported models. So you can see for a MacBook, it is possible on an early 2008 and later, but I do make, sh make sure that you check to see if there's any significant um, side effects of doing this before you jump in and doing it. Now, with the MacBook Air, you can see that anything from a late 2008 and later is possible, but a mid-2012 MacBook Air and later, everything is supported, which um, that's a much better thing to look out for. GPU acceleration, I wouldn't install it if that's a problem because, as I said, it makes it very slow. For MacBook Pros, it's possible to do it on anything from an early 2008 and later. However, from a mid-2012 and later, everything is supported. So I'm doing it on a mid-2012 today. For Mac Mini, early 2009 and later can do it, but from a late 2012 and later, everything is supported. For iMacs, anything from a mid-2007 and later is supported, but from late 2012 and later, everything is supported. And for Mac Pro, you can do it from an early 2008 and later, but from the early 2009s, everything is supported. So that's a good way just to make sure that you are doing it on a supported model. And once again, just look out for that GPU acceleration problem. Uh, if it says it's not supported, I would give Monterey a miss and just stay on either Big Sur or Catalina because that's a pretty big trade-off if you don't have C GPU acceleration. All right, so now that the Open Core Legacy Patcher has downloaded, we can close out of Safari. And now we'll go to our download section of the dock. And you can see it there. Now, firstly, we'll need to open Finder and then go to the Applications folder because we need to drag in Open Core Patcher into the Applications folder. So just drag it in like so. You'll hear the noise. And now it's in there. So now we can just double click on the Open Core Patcher. And at this point, I would recommend plugging in your bootable USB for Monterey that you created just earlier in Terminal. So just plug that in. And when you see this, when you try to open it, just click open. We can close the applications folder. All right, and you'll see that the terminal window is here and I've also got the USB drive plugged in, which is called install macOS Monterey. All right, so now it should be opening up the Open Core Legacy Patcher, and you can see it now. All right, so the first thing I'll need to do is change the model of the patcher because you can see here that it says uh, that it's MacBook Pro 12,1. This is an officially supported early 2015 MacBook Pro for Monterey. However, I'm going to be installing it onto a mid 2012 MacBook Pro. So in the description below, I'll leave linked an Apple support website where you can check the model numbers of each MacBook Pro that there is. And I'm looking for a mid-2012. So you can see it's a 9,2 model. So I'll minimize that. And I'm going to go type in number 3 to change the model here. So I type in number 3 and then click Enter. Now, you don't have to worry about this if you're doing it on the same uh, computer that you're going to be installing it on. So 
Um, don't worry about this step and you can skip ahead if you're doing it on the same. This is only for if you're creating it on a different computer. Now it says to enter the model identifier of the target machine, which is MacBook Pro 9, 2 for the mid-2012. And now you can see it's changed it to the model I need. So the next step is now to go and do number one to build open core. So we'll just click one and then enter and it will build it really quickly. And you can see that it's been built at this location. Now just press enter to go back. And now what we need to do is install open core to the USB drive. So we need to click number two and then go enter and then it will load the disk picker just allow terminal to access files on a removable volume um, so that you can bring up this picker here. And what you'll need to do is choose your USB drive with the bootable media. So for me, that's number two, but just make sure it's definitely the drive with the bootable media, otherwise this will not work. So I'll type in number two here and then click enter. And then what you'll need to do is choose the EFI partition, which is usually around 200 megabytes. And they'll usually put a little asterisk around the one that they recommend using. So for me, that's number one. And then just press enter. It'll need my administrator password to continue. So I'll do that now. And you'll see it's installing the open core onto the EFI partition of the bootable media. And this is what will allow you to install it on an unsupported Mac. You can see it says open core transfer complete. Press enter to continue. And that's all we need to do for the USB drive. All right, and then there's just one more thing we're going to do as a precautionary measure before we uh, install Mac OS Monterey, and that is to enable automatic login. Now, in some of the early betas of Mac OS Monterey, there were some issues with open core uh, on some of the Intel HD graphics uh, integrated chips um, on the early 2013 and earlier Max uh, was that it was getting stuck on the login page and weird graphical things were happening and you couldn't get into your OS. It doesn't seem to be happening as much anymore uh, and it hasn't happened to me when I've done it on my Intel HD graphics. Um, but we're just going to do it as a precautionary measure anyway, just in case, because I don't want anything to go wrong during the installation for any of you guys. So what I'm going to do is go to settings and we're just going to dis uh, enable the automatic login. Then we'll go to users and groups. And then we'll click the lock to make changes and I'll enter the administrator password. And then what you'll need to do is go to login options and then change automate login to your username. Uh, in this case, it's Unpack Technologies for me. And then you'll just need to enter your administrator password again. And now it's on automate login for Unpack Technologies or whatever your user is. Now you can just click the lock again and now automatic login is enabled. We can now close system preferences and move on to the next step. Now we are ready to install it onto our unsupported Mac. So I'll switch back to the camera view so I can show you how to boot into it and install the new operating system. All right, so I've got the USB drive plugged into this mid-2012 MacBook Pro, which I'm going to be installing Monterey onto. However, you can just plug it into whichever Mac you're going to be doing the installation onto. And what you'll need to do is when you turn it on, you'll need to hold down the option key, which is this one here. You can do it on either side. Uh, you'll need to hold that down until you see the boot menu. Then I'll show you what to do when that happens. So we'll just turn it on and I'll hold down the option key. You'll see it boot up. Just keep holding it until you see the boot menu. So I'll just keep holding. All right, and this is what the boot menu looks like. You'll see I've got a lot of partitions here because I've done a few dual boots in the past. But what you need to look for is you need to go all the way over to the EFI boot one. So you'll see EFI boot, it's got the open core logo on there. So just use your arrow key to go over 
to EFI boot and then press enter. It'll go to a black screen and then you've got a few options. What you want to do is go all the way over to install macOS Monterey beta. And it's got the Monterey logo. Um, ignore these two because that's just other dual boots I've got. But you need to make sure that you go to the Monterey installer and then just press enter. Now it will just boot into the USB drive. You'll get a status bar in a moment. And this might take a minute or so just to boot in. And I'll come back when it brings up the installer menu. All right, so it's about to load in. You can see that the mouse has come up in the top left-hand corner. And you'll see it's come up with macOS recovery and it says examining volumes. Now you'll see a screen like this and you've got a few options. So if you just want to do an upgrade to the computer, you can go straight to the menu that says install macOS Monterey. Uh, double click on that and then it will run you through the setup, which I'll go through in a moment. But if you would like to start afresh and to start by erasing the drive, you can first go down to Disk Utility and then press Continue. And it will open up the Disk Utility application. So just give it a moment to load the disks. And then what you want to do is go to the internal disk, which you're going to install it on, and choose the one which you would like. In this case, mine's called Monterey, but it might be like Macintosh HD for you. Uh, and then what you want to do is array, click the Erase button up here. And then give it a name and then you can just choose the format as APFS and then just click Erase. That will start erasing the device and you'll see that it's completed successfully. If it errors, just give it a couple of tries because sometimes that happens for me and just trying it a couple of times does the job. So now you can just click done and then close out of Disk Utility. And now you can double click on install macOS Monterey. So that this will now bring up a new window um, where we can install the operating system. All right, so you can see it's brought up this menu. Just ignore that it says beta. That's because it's going to be released in a couple of days, but it's still in the release candidate version. We'll just click continue. It can be a little bit slow on the USB drive uh, sometimes because it is running off of a USB. So just be patient with it. And then you'll need to just click agree to the terms and conditions once you've read them. And then it will ask you where you want to install macOS Monterey. So go to the disk which you either erased or are upgrading to and just choose the one which is called the name, which is Monterey or whatever you called it. And then just click it and then click continue. Now, if you've got a MacBook, I recommend plug it in, plugging it into a power source so that the battery doesn't die at some point. So mine's got a full charge, so I'm not too concerned. Uh, but I'd still recommend doing it anyway. And then just click continue when you see that. And then it will start the installation process. So you'll see here it says, it gives you a time indicator. Mine says about 28 minutes remaining. And it's saying it's going to be installed onto the disk which I selected, which is called Monterey. And so we'll just wait uh, through this time for it to finish. So this should take about half an hour. And then what it will do is it'll reboot and then it will do another installation process, which from my experience, like I've got a mechanical hard drive on here. I would recommend doing an SSD, uh, using an SSD for this because mechanical hard drives can be very slow. Um, but on this computer with a hard drive, it took about an hour and a half to two hours to do the Monterey install. And in my experience, when I've done this a couple of times, it seems to hang for a really long time uh, when it reboots, it'll say like less than a minute remaining and it will hang there for like a really long time. Uh, like sometimes even up to half an hour. Don't force it off because that will corrupt it. It's still working. Just let it go and um, wait until it reboots because uh, I let mine go and it eventually rebooted probably after around 15 minutes to half an hour later. Uh, and then it was into the Monterey installation. So... Just make sure that you let it go uh, and just leave the computer do its thing. I'd recommend just checking on it every so often, but try not to interact with it while it's installing. So I'll let this do its thing and don't worry if it reboots a couple of times and I'll come back when it's almost finished the installation. All 
All right, so you can see that it's just rebooted from the installation page and you can see that it just brought up the boot menu and it's automatically selected the Monterey partition that we've just installed it onto. You can see now it's brought up a status bar and in a moment it should bring up a little estimated time remaining indicator below it. Uh, and this is the time that will take the longest. So uh, I might say about 30 minutes remaining, but then it will reboot and continue installing. So just let it do its thing. It'll reboot a couple of times. Um, you can see it's just brought up the mouse there uh, in the top left hand corner, but try not to interact with the computer. And you can see it's just brought up the about 29 minutes remaining uh, indicator below and that's just giving you an idea of how long it will take. So this will take a long time and I'll come back when it's completed the installation and it is ready to be set up. Okay, so you can see that we finally reached the setup screen for macOS Monterey and you can tell it's Monterey because it's got that new sort of bluish pinky background. Um, so that looks quite nice. So I'm going to quickly run through this setup uh, and if you started afresh, you'll have the setup to do as well. But if you did an upgrade experience, you'll be straight where you left off. So I'll quickly get through this and then I'll come back when I get to the home page. All right, so we've completed the setup and we're now at the macOS Monterey desktop. I did just have to plug in the charger um, during the setup because it was getting low on battery. Uh, but as you can see, this is the mid 2012 MacBook Pro running Monterey. Now you may be noticing that the menu bar and the dock are not transparent at the moment and that's because any Mac with the Intel HD graphics 4000 integrated graphics chip needs an additional patch to run correctly otherwise uh, the chip won't work because they actually removed support for it in the Mac OS code. So you can see you probably won't be able to see it on camera but if you're if you have one of these computers with this chip uh, the mouse is quite stuttery at the moment and the computer is quite slow. And the graphics are all a bit confused. It thinks you're mo mirroring to another monitor. It just doesn't work. So we'll have to go back to Open Core to install the patcher. Now, the Macs that are affected by this are generally early 2013 Macs and older. But if you have a newer Mac than that, I'd recommend still hanging around because I'm going to do it, change a couple of settings in open core so that it runs more like a native machine. Now, if you did an upgrade, you should still have the open core app. However, because I did a fresh install, I'm going to need to re-download the open core app. Now, the nice thing about this is that Wi-Fi works natively out of the box. So, um, we don't need to worry about any patches for the Wi-Fi. So I'll go to Safari and re-download OpenCore. Once again, the links are in the description below. Legacy. Oops. I don't think that was typing. Monterey. All right. Um, so we're going to go back and download the patcher from GitHub. So we're going to releases and I'll just download the TY app. Allow the downloads. This is just the same process as earlier. All right, that's downloaded. So we can quit out of Safari now. Uh, we'll move OpenCore back into the applications folder like so. All right. So that's now in the applications folder. So we can now open it by double clicking on it. I'll close Finder and we'll just click open when we see that window. All right, it's loading in. Okay, and we've now got the patcher loaded in. All right, because we haven't yet installed the patcher for the integrated graphics card, I am going to unfortunately just have to film this section on camera and not do a screen recording because it does not recognize uh, any external display is in this state but once we do this patching it'll all work like a normal mac so what we need to do is we need to start off by going to the post install patch uh volume patch there which is number three so i'll type in number three into the menu and then click enter 
it will bring up a heap of options and we need to do number one, which says patch system volume. So I'll click number one and then click enter. It'll give me a warning just to confirm and we'll just need to click Y for yes and then click enter. It will download uh, it from GitHub. It's about, I think 200 megs from memory. And then once it downloads the file, it will install the patches and then you'll be right to go from there. So we'll just let this download. All right, there we go. It's downloaded the file and it's just unzipping it now. And we'll just let that go for a moment. And now it says it's downloaded to that location. We'll press enter to continue. We'll need an administrator password to continue the patches. So I'll do that now followed by pressing the enter key. So I'll just click enter after typing the password. And now it's just gonna work through the patches. Just click enter to continue. Now it's up to rebuilding the kernel cache. This may take a while as it says, so I'll uh, come back when that's done there. All right, and you'll see it's just finished and it says press enter to continue the snap snapshotting. So I'll just continue that. It'll create a new APFS snapshot. Um, but then it says to reboot the machine for the patches to take effect. Now I press enter to continue. This will take us back to the home screen. Now we'll reboot it in a moment, but first there's a few other things that we need to change before we're done. So first of all, we need to just change some of the patches settings because when we boot up, if we don't change this setting, what will happen is it'll keep showing that boot menu. Now, if you want to see that every time, then that's fine. You can leave this as is, but if you want it to look like it's actually an officially supported Mac, um, we'll change this setting so that you don't see it do the sort of EFI boot and show all the partitions at the start. It'll also hopefully mean for a little bit of a quicker boot up. So we'll go to number five and click enter to get into the settings. Then we need to need to get into miscellaneous settings, which is also number five in this menu. Click enter, and then you'll see a few options. What we need to do is look at number one, and it says set show picker mode, and the currently it is true. So that means that is on, but we wanna set that to false so that we don't see that every time. So we'll go one, and then we'll click enter, and we don't want it on, which means N for no. We'll enter in and then click enter. And now you can see it says currently false. Now we'll go Q for quit and Q for quit again. And now we're back to the main page. Now what we need to do is click one to build open core so that the changes take effect. It'll quickly build it. All right, it's already done. And then we'll click enter to go back. And the last step is we need to install OpenCore to the internal drive so that we don't need the USB drive to boot up every time. So then we can just remove the USB drive and it will boot up natively. So we'll go to and enter. It'll load the disk picker like we've done earlier in this tutorial. All right, and it'll bring up this list of devices. And what we want to do is find the internal hard drive, which it's on. So in this case, my Monterey is on an 160 gig internal drive, but just make sure you look for the one which yours is running on. So for me, that's zero and then click enter. And then we need to choose the EFI partition, which as we saw before, uh, the asterisk means it's a likely candidate. So we'll go number one for EFI and then click enter. And then it will install open core onto the internal hard drive. It might need an administrator password to continue. So I'll just do that now and then click enter. All right, so I've just entered that in and it will just copy it over. And as you can see, it is completed. So I'll click enter to continue. That's all we need in terminal now. So we can click Q for quit, click enter, and then just terminate it like so. All right, so now that we've done that final work in the Open Core Legacy Patcher app, we can now quit out of terminal and then we can reboot the Mac. But firstly, I'm going to eject the USB drive. So I'll move it to the bin so I can safely eject it. Um, so, because we no longer need it to boot up. 
So we'll shut it down firstly, and then we'll reboot it and make sure that everything has worked, including those patches that we've just done for the Intel HD graphics 4000. So I'll just let this shut down. All right, now just turn it back on and we'll make sure it's all working correctly. So for this generation of MacBook Pro, it should go to a white screen first and then flick over to the black screen. And on some of the newer ones, it will just always be a black screen. So um, we'll make sure that kicks over. It might take a little while on the first boot up, but after that, it should all work quite nicely. So we'll just make sure this kicks over. All right, so you can see it's just flicked over into the black screen and we've got the loading bar uh, to indicate that we're getting into the macOS Monterey operating system. So I'll come back when it's booted up. All right, so as you can see, the Mac is now booted up into its fully functional Monterey operating system. And after applying those patches for the Intel HD Graphics 4000, we're now getting the proper transparent menus and the computer is much snappier as a whole, which is great to see. And it actually runs pretty well. So um, there's one more thing I'm going to change. So if you change the automatic login settings early in the tutorial as a precautionary measure, um, I'm just going to switch over to a screen recording quickly to show you how to disable that so that you have to enter your password every time. All right, so this is just how to disable the automatic login that we enabled earlier just to prevent any problems with the installation. So we'll go back to system preferences, then we'll head over to users and groups, and then we'll have to click the lock to make changes and enter the administrator password. So I'll do that now. You'll hear that unlock sound. And then what you'll need to do is go to login options and then un ne next to automatic login, you'll see it says unpack technologies here or whatever your user is called. We're just going to click that and then change it to off. So the automatic login is now off and then we can click the lock to prevent any more changes. Then we can close out the system preferences and that's all we need to do. Now back to the video. So now that you've turned off the automatic login, if you had turned that on earlier in the tutorial, you're done. Um, that's all there is to installing Mac OS Monterey on an unsupported Mac using the OpenCore Legacy Patcher. I really like this patcher. It's quite straightforward to use and once you get the hang of it, it works pretty well. And it's great that we can just breathe some more life into these computers by putting the latest operating system with all the new features. And yeah, I just think Mac OS Monterey looks really nice. It's just a nice addition to what we got with the major redesign in Big Sur. So hopefully you've had some great success in installing Mac OS Monterey on your unsupported Mac. And let me know in the comments below how you went and if you have any questions or concerns about this process. Thanks for watching this video on Unpack Technologies. Don't forget to leave a like, comment and subscribe. And I'll see you all in the next video.